Hello guys, my name is Celso. In this tutorial video, I would like to discuss with you about the capacitor element and its basic concepts. We will start with a Y-connected three-phase capacitor bank. Each branch has an impedance of Zs or an admittance Yc. Let's assume that this is a Y-grounded connection. Then, the voltage across the branch connected to phase A is Va and the voltage across phases A and B will be called VAB. We know that the three-phase complex power consumed can be broken into a three-phase active power and a three-phase reactive power. Assuming that the system is symmetric and balanced, the complex power consumed by each branch is the same. Then, we can say that the three-phase power is equal to 3 times VA times IA conjugated. Let's keep this expression. We also know that VA is equal to ZC times IA and that ZC is equal to 1 over J omega C which can be written as minus J times a reactance XC. From equations 1 and 2, we can say that the three-phase complex power is equal to 3 times VA square over ZC conjugated. In a three-phase symmetric and balanced system, VA is equal to VAB divided by square root of 3. Applying this relation, we get that the three-phase complex power is VAB square divided by ZC conjugated. Finally, from expressions 3 and 4, we find that the three-phase complex power is equal to minus J omega C times V square, where V is the line-to-line -line voltage. Comparing with the general expression, we can see that the three-phase complex power has only its reactive power, which makes sense due to the fact that there is no resistance in our capacitor model. As the three-phase complex power was defined as the power consumed by the capacitor bank, the minus sign means that this element actually generates reactive power. The same way we did in the last tutorial video, we can calculate the Y-primitive matrix for the capacitors as well. We know that it relates the injected currents with the nodal voltages. In this example, the relation between the injected current and the nodal voltage in each phase is pretty simple. Then, we can easily find that the Y-primitive matrix is a diagonal matrix, with all of the elements in the diagonal being equal to Yc. Now, how can we define this element in OpenSCS? Let's assume that we want to connect our capacitor bank in a medium voltage distribution line. In OpenSCS, we can model it as two three-phase lines connected between three buses, K, L, and M. The branches of the capacitor bank will then be connected to nodes 1, 2, and 3 of bus L, and its center node connected to node 0, which is always grounded. The Y-primitive matrix nodes order is then 1, 2, and 3. In OpenSCS, firstly, I will create an element circuit. The first line defined will be the three-phase line named as KL connected between buses K and L. And the second one is the line LM connected between buses L and M. Our capacitor bank will be named as CAP1. It has three phases. It's Y connected. Its rated voltage will be 13 0.8 kV, rated power of 100 kVars, and it's connected to bus L. Let's solve the circuit and check the powers in the element report. As you can notice, the rated power specified of 100 kVars is evenly split between each branch. One should also notice that it has a negative sign as we were expecting. By running the dump command, we can verify that the Y primitive matrix has only its imaginary part, or susceptance matrix B. Now, you might be asking yourself, why are there six nodes in this matrix? As explained in the Y matrix tutorial video, the answer is because the Y primitive matrix relates the injected currents and the nodal voltages of the element, regardless any possible connection to ground. Besides that, Differently from the load element that is a power conversion element, the capacitor element in OpenSCS is a power delivery element, 
which means that it can be connected between two buses in a series connection, like a line, for example. In fact, in the Help menu, it can be seen that it is inserted in the PZ element section and that it has a parameter called bus2. In the description of this parameter, it is said that, by default, the second bus is defined as the same bus of bus1, with all the phases connected to node 0, which is exactly what we wanted to. That would be the same as say that bus2 is equal to L.0.0.0, .0 as can be noticed in the bus2 parameter. As mentioned in the Y matrix video, the nodes connected to ground doesn't affect the system's Y matrix. Then, as all of the terminals of bus2 are grounded, the only part of the Y primitive matrix that will affect the Y matrix of the system is the first 3x3 three three submatrix, which is the one that we have calculated. We can also verify the value of YC by using the expression we derived at the beginning of this example. We know that YC is equal to J omega C. Then we can say that YC is equal to minus J times the three phase reactive power divided by the square of the rated line to line voltage. Pay attention that the value defined in the KVAR parameter is the rated reactive power of the element, which means the module of the reactive power. We know that the actual reactive power consumed by a capacitor has a negative sign because it is generated, not consumed. Then we have that YC should be equal to minus J times minus 100 KVAR divided by 13.8 KV square. That is J 0.0005250999769, exactly the same value calculated by OpenDSS. Keep in mind that B matrix does include the J, because it is already the imaginary part of Y. Now, let's analyze the model of a Y ungrounded capacitor bank. In this case, we have nodes A, B, C and the neutral, which can either be connected to another conductor, for example, the neutral conductor of a line, or be left open. The voltage at the center node is not zero anymore. We will name it as Vn. Then, the voltage across the branch connected to phase A, for example, will be Van. There are four injected currents, Ia, Ib, Ic, and In. The three-phase complex power absorbed by the capacitor bank is the sum of the single-phase complex power absorbed by each branch, and Ia, Ib, Ic, are equal to YC times the voltage across the respective branch. As we want to find the Y primitive matrix, we have to find the relations between the injected currents and the nodal voltages. Then we can write IA as YC times VA minus YC times VN, IB as YC times VB minus YC times VN, and IC as YC times VC minus YC times VN. Finally, applying KCL to the center node, we have that IN is equal to minus IA minus IB minus IC. And substituting the expressions for IA, IB and IC, we can say that IN is equal to minus YC times VA minus YC times VB minus YC times VC plus 3 times YC times VN. Writing these expressions in a matricial format, we find the following Y primitive matrix. In OpenDSS, we will have basically the same example. However, the capacitor bank center node will be connected to node 4 of bus L instead of bus 0. Back to OpenDSS, I will change the name of the capacitor to CAP2. And now, we have to clearly specify the bus 2 parameter. We have the three branches of the capacitor bank connected to the same bus, bus L, and to the same node, node 4. Then, bus 2 must be defined as L.4.4.4. Solving the power flow, let's check the Y primitive matrix. If you pay attention, the Y primitive matrix is exactly the same of the last case, and not what we were expecting. Why is that? 
Remember that the Y primitive matrix relates the nodal voltages and the ejected currents of the element, regardless how these nodes are connected to the system. In other words, we still have two terminals with three nodes each, even though the three nodes of the second terminal are connected to each other. However, the connection between its second terminal's nodes is taken into account when the system's Y matrix is built. Let's check it right now. As you can notice, each row and column is related to a specific node of the system. The node 4 of bus L is separated from the other nodes of the same bus due to the fact that it was mentioned for the first time in the last element defined in the DSS script. If we look into the corresponding columns, we can notice that the last row is exactly the last row of the Y primitive matrix that we have been expecting. And the same applies for the last column. Now, let's consider a three-phase capacitor bank in a delta connection. Notice that the voltage across each branch is now a line-to-line -line voltage. Then, assuming a balanced and symmetric system, we can say that the three-phase complex power absorbed by this capacitor bank is equal to 3 times VAB times IAB conjugated. We also know that VAB is equal to ZC times IAB. Then, the three-phase complex power can be written as 3 times VAB square divided by ZC conjugated. As there are three nodes in this capacitor bank, the general format for the Y primitive matrix is the following. In the same manner we have done for a delta-connected three-phase load, we apply the definition method here again. As an example, let's calculate the first column of the Y primitive matrix. We can write these three equations as the first column times VA plus the second column times VB plus the third column times VC. If we intentionally ground the nodes B and C and apply a non-voltage to the node A, the relation between each injected current IA, IC, IB and the voltage VA will give us the first column of the Y primitive matrix. In this situation, we can note that the voltage across the branch between nodes A and C and the branch between nodes A and B is equal to VA, whereas the voltage across the branch between nodes B and C is equal to zero. Then, applying KCL to node A, we can say that IA is equal to IAB minus ICA, IAB is YC times VA, and ICA is minus YC times VA. Then, we have that IA is 2 times YC times VA. Applying KCL to node B, we can say that IB is equal to IBC minus IAB, but IBC is null. Then we have that IB is equal to minus YC times VA. Finally, applying KCL to node C, we can say that IC is equal to ICA minus IBC, but again IBC is null. Then we have that IC is equal to minus YC times VA. Therefore, the first column is 2 times YC, minus YC and minus YC. Applying the same principle to nodes B and C, one can find that the full Y primitive matrix is the following. In OpenDSS, this is the new situation. The code is essentially the same as we used in the first case. We just need to switch the connection from Y to Delta. There is no need to define the second bus. So in the circuit, we can verify that the reactive power absorbed by the three-phase Delta connected capacitor bank is 100 kVar, as expected. Keep in mind that this is only true because the voltage across the capacitor bank is nearly the rated voltage. Otherwise, the power absorbed would be different, as a capacitor bank is an element bottled as a constant impedance, not a constant power. Running the dump command, we can see that the Y primitive matrix is exactly what we expected. Notice that for a delta connection, there is no second terminal. 
That's why the matrix order is truly matching the matrix we have derived. We can also model a single phase capacitor. It can be connected between a phase and the ground or between any other nodes that you wish, for example, between a phase and the neutral. In the first case, the complex power is simply VA times IA conjugated and the Y primitive matrix is equal to YC. In the second one, the complex power is VAN times IA conjugated. IA can be written as YC times VA minus YC times VN and IN is simply minus IA. Then, arrange these two expressions in a matricial format, we find the following Y primitive matrix. In OpenSES, in the first case, we have to connect the capacitor between nodes 1 and 0 of bus L, whereas in the second one, it must be connected between nodes 1 and 4. Pay attention that, in this situation, there has to be another conductor connected to node 4 of bus L, otherwise the capacitor would be floating in the system and would not affect it. In OpenDSS, let's consider the single phase grounded capacitor case. All we have to do is to define the number of phases equal to 1. We can delete the parameter connection because it doesn't make sense to talk about Y or delta connection for a single phase element. And the most important part is that the KV parameter has to be defined as the rated line to ground voltage. That for a line to line voltage of 13.8 KV is equal to 7.9674 KV. Solving the circuit and running the dump command, we can notice that the Y primitive matrix also includes the noted connected to ground. However, as we have been mentioning since the Y matrix tutorial video, it won't affect the system's Y matrix and, by consequence, the power flow solution.